Hey guys, Mary from SVG Cuts with some fun projects for Thanksgiving. And most of them are really quick to put together since Thanksgiving here in the US is coming up in about a week. So the obviously this one takes the longest to put together. And I used some lights from Michaels, the Heidi Swap Marquee Love lights, which I have right over here. It's these. They come in a string of 24 with 24 little caps. So you put the lights through the back and you put the caps on the front. So I'm looking forward to coming up with some more shapes for other, you know, other shapes for other holidays and occasions. Um, it took me a little bit longer to get this, get this going than I thought it would. So it's a little late days right now for pumpkins, but um, I think it's really cool. And might as well turn it on and it goes together pretty quick. I will show you that here in just a moment. But the, all the other projects here are super duper quick. We've got our really cute little turkey napkin. And this guy, the turkey napkin, goes together. You just want to fan fold a napkin, which I haven't done in quite some time. I think my mom might have taught me when I was a little girl. Um, I didn't remember. So I looked it up on YouTube and I got some dinner napkins from Party City that are, they're about seven and a half by seven and a half. And anything similar is gonna look nice. Even a solid color would look nice. Um, and I will show you how that goes together. It's very easy into a little fan fold. And then your cute little turkey just goes right in front. And I whipped up a couple of them real quick because it is just all one piece. And all you're gonna do is put a little dot of glue um, here, which I will show you in just a minute. But it's nice because um, nice and quick you can fit two of them on one piece of 12 by 12 paper so if you would like to make quite a few it's actually a snap so i was really happy with how that came out i kind of tinkered with it for a while until i got it um, to look the way i wanted and be really easy so i'm excited about my turkey napkins and it looks really cute on top of a plate and if you want to um, you know, get kind of fancy if you have some chargers. I got these, they're just plastic ones from Michaels. A couple bucks, you know, it looks nice, makes a nice presentation. Or you can cut out one of these large leaves at the maximum size, put that on there, or maybe, you know, before, before people put their food, you know, they would obviously move it. Or you can just put it on your dining table or your buffet or just wherever. Um, these just look nice, kind of scattered around. So we also have such a good helper. Um, I also got this really nice glass cylinder from Michaels. And I have it listed in your PDF and on the product page, um, the size of it. And then I just put a nice little timer candle in there, as well as um, this is from Michaels from the candle aisle. And I just put that down there. I just put uh, my design right on here with some nice chalkboard vinyl. And if you've never worked with vinyl before, I will show you here in just a minute just how easy it actually is. So can we just, can we just scooch, just scooch out of the way, please? Um, so I will show you here in just a minute just how easy that is. So we also have um, a nice little you want to be careful if I put this piece of paper around my wine bottle also just to just to make it look nice maybe um, tape it into place or just be really careful when you pick it up because it does want to slide around but anyway this nice tag here <clears throat> is really quick and simple and it makes such a nice hostess gift host or hostess gift if you're going somewhere not just for Thanksgiving, but you know, anytime during the fall, or you could change the leaves to be something else. Nice and simple, and the chalkboard paper that they have at Michael's um, is, you know, I think it's, it's a little pricey because they just, all I could find was this large package of 24 sheets, but it cuts really nicely, and it's actually really easy to write on with chalk, so I do really like it a lot. If you've got a coupon, you know, you could use it for that. Um, but that will last me probably for the rest of my life because it's quite a bit of chalkboard paper. So what else do we have? That is it as far as what projects we have, except for 
our nice little wine wine glass leaves and it's cute because it just fits right onto it nice and simple there's just a slit with a circle and if you cut a couple different designs and colors it serves as like a wine marker so people can tell their wine apart and it looks really cute so i like that a lot nice and quick and simple and then the paper that i used this time is by bow bunny and it's called enchanted harvest and i think it's so pretty I didn't quite get to use as much of it as I would have liked to, but um, nice and pretty, vintage, colorful, love it. But whatever paper you're going to use is, of course, going to look awesome. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how these projects go together. So let's get started. So first for our turkey napkin, as you can see, it's just all one piece. First, we want to fold it like so. You can pull his little beak up and pull his little wings up and then fold him like this and this is the base where he's going to sit sit flat and then all these other folds are going to be an accordion style so we just want to fold those accordion style and now this paper that I'm using is shimmery, so it kind of looks a little, a little different than if you're going to use plain paper. Either way is totally cool. So all I'm doing is folding this up and holding it together as it dries. So this paper that I'm using takes a little bit longer to dry with the glue than regular paper, but as you can see I'm just holding it together where it's glued giving it a chance to dry, and then he's all done. So if you want, if you want, you can put a little, um, a little glue dot behind him. So for example, I have these 3D Zots that I like to use a lot, and I actually, I tore one in half, and I put one down under here to kind of hold that a little tighter and I put one up in here to hold that a little tighter but that is totally optional I just think it makes it kind of stay together a little better but it's not necessary at all so the way that you fan fold the napkin to go behind him as you can see he sits nicely like this is to take a dinner dinner napkin any kind of fall color is going to look nice and what you want to do is lay it flat. So as you can see, the whole thing is like this. And I've got it laid flat. And I'm just going to start at the bottom, maybe about an inch or so um, wide. I'm just going to accordion fold it about an inch or so wide. And I'm going to keep going until I've got about this much left. Then I want to fold it in half like this and then tuck this corner inside. And that kind of creates a little kickstand for your napkin. And it holds it together and you can set your turkey right in front of it. So next for our wine bottle tag, it's nice and simple. Fits over the wine bottle. And I also put a nice piece of paper around here, which does make it a little hard to hold on to. So just be careful if you're going to do that. I just thought it looked pretty with the tag, but most wine bottle labels are already pretty, so that is probably not necessary. But as you can see, nice and simple, it just folds in two places. You just want to glue this on here. And then, of course, your two little leaves you can glue into place also. And if you've got some three-dimensional, these are 3D Zots, and they're available at Michael's and the usual, usual craft places. They just add some nice dimension if you want to put one of those on to glue, to affix your leaves into place. So next for our pumpkin marquee sign, we are basically going to make two shapes that are mirror images of each other. So first of all, I've got two pieces like this that are identical. 
And then I've got the sides here, which are numbered. And there's one, two, three. And then there's another one, two, three with some little circles cut out. So these go together because they have the circles and these go together because they don't. So we're gonna do the same exact thing with both of them. So to do that, I am going to take piece number one here. There's a little one cut out and there's two little guidelines right there. And what we wanna do is actually put glue on the back side so that it's not visible when our pumpkin is all together. So I am putting this piece number two right onto piece number one using those two little guidelines to help me line it up nicely. So next I wanna do the same thing here with some glue on the back side. And there's, again, there's those two little guidelines there that can help me line up piece number three nicely right onto piece number two. So finally, I wanna do the same thing and glue piece number three here. And now these guidelines actually will be folded. So I can go ahead and put some glue on the back side of piece number three, which is folded over. And I've just got that glued right into place there. And this is the stem, which is folded like this. So there's our pumpkin shape. And now we can go ahead and fold over all of these little teeth. So as you can see, I've got all my teeth folded over into place and I've got a piece of scrap paper here because what I'm gonna do is take one of these shapes and I'm gonna take, I'm looking at the back side of it here and I'm gonna put a line of glue all the way around the edge of the back side. So I've got my piece here with the teeth folded over on my scrap paper and I've got a line of glue around the back side edge of this piece. So what I want to do is put it stem first inside this shape. So I've got the stem in place and the rest of it kind of just falls right into place around the edge of the pumpkin. So as you can see, I'm pressing down around the whole outside edge of my pumpkin. And as it's drying, making sure that it's all nice and flat, and then I can flip it over, take a look. If any of these are not glued down, you could add a little bit more glue, make sure it's good. But it looks like mine's all set. So we wanna do the same thing with this other piece, with the other sides here. We're gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing with this piece and these sides. But as long as this is still flat, you can go ahead and glue your decorative panels into place. Go ahead and glue your two sides, the center, as well as your stem into place. So again, I've got my teeth folded down on my scrap paper here and it's going to go in like this so I want to put the line of glue once again around the edge of the back side just like we did before and we want to go in stem first make sure that's lined up really nicely and then the other sides fall into place nicely. You just wanna make sure that, that that stem is nice and tight so that everything lines up really well. 
And as that's drying, we want to make sure that those stem, stem edges are not slipping out of place as it dries and the rest of it falls right into place as well. So the next thing we can do is glue these guys together back to back just like this. So I'm going to cover the whole back side here with a line of glue around the, around the edge and I'm going to fill in the rest of it with some glue. And then I'm going to go ahead and just line that up and glue them together just like this. So once you've got it lined up, you can see it's lined up nicely because all the holes line up, all the edges line up. And then as it's drying, it's kind of a good idea if you've got a couple stacks of paper to set right on top so that those edges, these edges are going to get pressed together. Obviously you don't want it to be so heavy that it's going to crush your project, but um, we want these edges to be nicely together. So if you want to take 10, 15 minutes to let it dry with some nice packs of paper on top of it, maybe like two stacks of paper, um, that would be a good idea. So I let my project sit underneath some heavy stuff for like 15 minutes and the, the edges are nicely together, which is great because we want those to be nice and tight so that when we put our edges in place, it lines up as nicely as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my edge pieces. I've got three rectangles and I just happened to cut these out of a nice brown polka dot paper. And then I've got this part that goes over the stem. So since my paper is white core, I took a brown ink pad and rubbed that on the fold lines as well as on the edges of the paper just to make it a little more finished off and look nice. So the first thing I want to do is put my stem edge piece into place. So I'm going to put some glue all over the back side of this and then I'm going to pop that right into place. And it doesn't matter which way it's turned. It's going to work. It's going to work out either way. And then we can go ahead and start to put our edges into place. So to do that, all I'm going to do is put glue all over the back side of each each edge. And I want to get it anchored nicely right up against the stem there and then I just want to press it into place making sure it's nice and centered on there. So once it's in place it's a good idea to really make sure that the front side of it looks really nice and go around the edge squeezing it on the front side. You might find that the back side doesn't line up quite as nicely. It's only because of the, just the nature of this shape, how it's kind of, you know, it's really stiff in the middle and then the sides are kind of floppy. So you may find that the two sides don't want to lay flat. Mine are laying flat really nicely. Um, it's just the nature of that shape. You might find that you have to choose one side that's going to lay flatter. So, what I'm saying is you want to make sure that your front, the front of your project looks nice if you have to choose the front or the back. So I'm putting my second edge piece into place using the same exact method. Just making sure that front looks really nice and also the back. Mine is a little bit off here, but you get the idea. I'm just going to plow ahead here and put this final edge piece into place. And something nice that finishes it off really nicely once all these edge pieces are in place is, well, I'm going to butt this one up against the stem just like I did 
to begin with. Making sure it lines up really nicely. And then finally, something that would be nice for my particular project here would be if I took another, another swipe with my brown ink pad. So I could get, get my brown ink pad out and again go over these edges just to kind of blend everything together even better, kind of finish it off nicely. So the next thing we want to do is take these reinforcement pieces and if you kind of stack them up, you can see that they go from slightly shorter to slightly taller. So what we want to do with these is glue these into the bottom of the back side, starting with the tallest one first. Just get it nicely centered and then work your way up in size from the, the largest to the smallest. And this is just going to kind of way down way down the bottom a little bit just perfectly and also make it so that it stands up nicely because without these I noticed mine had a tendency to want to tip over so this just ensures that it's nice and strong in the back and it's going to stand up nice and straight so you can center yours a little more nicely than I just did, but you get the idea. Those four go in the bottom. And then we can go ahead and put our lights into place. To do that, I'm going to open up my little box of 24 lights here, which I happen to get at Michael's, but I've heard that they have them at Hobby Lobby and probably some other craft stores too and I'm sure online. So we also want to open up our box of caps. And I'm going to flip this over. I'm just going to pour those all right in there. So what I'm going to do is gently put each little bulb into place. And it kind of helps to twist them a little bit. So you just want to go ahead and put all 24 little caps through those holes into place. And then we will put our lights in from the back side. Here is the front of my project with all the caps in. And here's what it looks like from the back side. So. We want to start with the end of our string of lights. This is the end. And I'm going to put that one in this top spot here. And then I'm going to work my way down the side of this all the way, all the way to this bottom one here. Then we're going to work our way back up the top. All the way back up. It's not the prettiest sound when it's scraping on the table. Um, and then we want to continue across. All the way across to the other side and work our way down the other side of the pumpkin until we get to the bottom and then from this bottom come back up to the final little spot there. So that leaves this guy. I think it's nice once you get up there, put that through here, and then we can put our little battery holder into place. So to make this, I just put some glue on that side tab there, and then put some glue on these tabs, fold that bottom into place, put some glue on the back side, 
and glue that right here just above those two bottom lights. And then your battery pack slides in there nicely. And you can also add your nice little leaf up at the top. So finally for our branch design in vinyl on our candle holder, I went ahead and cut my design out of vinyl. And this time I used some white vinyl because I thought that might look nice for winter. So I just happened to be using a Sizzix Eclipse 2, so that's why my mat is blue. Maybe yours looks a little different, but it's 12 by 12 and I've got my piece of vinyl here. I cut both um, pieces out. So this is one of my branch, branch shapes. So after it is cut, and you want to make sure that your machine is only cutting the vinyl, not the backing paper that the vinyl's on, so that you can peel away the parts of your design that you don't want. So you want to go ahead and peel away, peel away the parts of your design that you don't want, being careful, going slow, in case you accidentally peel up your design. So you just want to leave the branch design on your mat on top of its backing paper. So if it helps to go through and have a little pair of scissors handy to kind of cut this away, you can do that. I'm kind of just going for it. It's coming up really nicely and no no trouble here, knock on wood. And here and there, it's it wants to peel up my design too, but then I just stop, push it back down, and there we go. So, we also want to get rid of this part here. I don't have my X-Acto knife handy. That would help to kind of grab this. So we want to get rid of this also. So now the next thing you want to do is take a piece of transfer paper. And this is plain transfer paper. They also make clear transfer paper. Cricut does, which I got at Michael's. And the clear is kind of easier because then you can see exactly where you're putting it once you have your design on it. But whether your paper is clear or not, you want to go ahead and peel it off the backing paper and then put that down right on top of your design. Making sure it's nice and flat, no bubbles or anything. And if you have a brayer or a bone folder handy, you can go ahead and make sure that it's nice and flat because we're going to peel it off and we really want the design to be stuck to the transfer paper. I think that can be the trickiest part. So it is coming up really nicely. As you can see, my design is stuck right onto my transfer paper. And this, this shouldn't happen. This is the backing paper. My, my cut setting must have been a little high because my machine cut all the way through the backing paper, but that's okay. Then you want to make sure that whatever you're going to put it on, in this case, this glass, you want to make sure it's nice and clean and dry. And then go ahead and put it in place, making sure that making sure that it's lined up as nicely as possible. So this is where it helps to have the clear transfer paper so that you can see so that you can see right down onto your project. So if you would like, you can again go ahead and smooth, smooth it down. Once you've got it all smoothed down nice and flat, 
you want to go ahead and carefully peel off your transfer paper. And if you start to see that it's taking the vinyl with it, you just want to put it back down. Maybe give it a good, give it some good pressure with something and then continue to carefully peel it away. Then when it's time to add your little piece of chalkboard vinyl, if that's what you're doing, I noticed that you don't even need to use transfer paper for this little piece. Once your branch design is in place, you can just go ahead, peel that off and stick it right in the middle of that shape. So there you have it, really nice, elegant, quick projects for Thanksgiving and beyond. I hope you enjoy making them. If you do, you'll have to share a picture on Facebook, on our Facebook wall, um, on Instagram, put it on your blog, pin it on Pinterest, however you'd like to share. We always love to see your projects. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Happy crafting and happy Thanksgiving. Good job, Winnie.